uh, Tucker Carlson is in Moscow. Uh, he's been filmed in Moscow. Um, uh, you know, he was filmed uh, flying in. He's been filmed, I guess, walking around. And he was filmed entering the Kremlin and exiting the Kremlin. And everybody is pretty convinced, uh, even though he has not actually stated this, convinced that he has interviewed Vladimir Putin for his ex show. And he's going to be publishing uh, the, uh, uh, that uh, on, uh, on X or Twitter at some point. Um, uh, basically, the world is, is uh, uh, at least on Twitter, going apoplectic around this. Uh, you know, uh, some people are calling uh, Tucker Carlson uh, for his arrest when he arrives back in the United States. That would be interesting because I'm not sure on what basis he would be arrested. I mean, we still have an embassy in, uh, in Moscow. We still have ambassadors there. Y you can still go and you can still come back and uh, you can still do business, partially business. We... We have sanctions that are limited. Uh, we still buy, I believe the United States just still buys uranium from Russia. So uh, the whole thing is just blown out of proportion. Uh, and, 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 and just ludicrous, uh, the idea of arresting him, I think that was, um, uh, that was proposed on, on Twitter. Uh, but uh, there is, there is uh, a, a, an issue, there is a question here. Should somebody like Tucker Carlson, should a US journalist be interviewing Vladimir Putin? Uh, my, uh, my argument would be no, we shouldn't. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, this is something that's pretty common for American journalists. So I don't think Tucker should be treated any differently than the journalists who uh, have uh, over uh, the decades, whether it's journalists who interviewed Hitler uh, in, uh, in the late 1930s, maybe into the beginning of World War II even, but certainly in the, just before the breakout of World War II, to the journalist who interviewed Muammar Gaddafi or, or interviewed uh, the, uh, uh, the, the Iranian president or uh, American journalists who, who uh, interviewed all kinds of authoritarian uh, dictators who were uh, threats and threatening or American journalists who went in and interviewed Osama bin Laden. You remember, you remember there was a journalist who interviewed Osama bin Laden post 9-11. Uh, you know, journalists do this. Now, granted, Tucker Carlson's not exactly a journalist. He's a propagandist. But uh, American journalists have interviewed some of our uh, biggest enemies. And uh, the, the reality is, and this is a failure of foreign policy, not a failure of Tucker Carlson's, that Vladimir Putin is, uh, it, it, it has not been declared an enemy of the United States. We Again, we still have an embassy there. We still, to some extent, trade. Uh, we, we still have not, uh, you know, embargoed Russia. Uh, Russia is, and, and for that matter, we are now, as a government, as a U.S. government, refusing to aid Ukraine in its uh, battle, uh, in its war against Russia. So overall, uh, you know, we, we have, I think, uh, at, at least a certain percentage of the American public and and part of the American government, the Republicans basically, have basically said that Vladimir Putin is no threat to the United States. And as such, you know, why wouldn't Tucker Carlson go and interview him? Now, I think it's pretty horrible, right? Um, I, you know, if, if, if uh, Skyler says Wallace interviewed Khomeini, yeah, I know. And it's horrible, and it's immoral, and it's wrong. I think it's wrong for Tucker Carlson to interview, uh, I don't think it should be illegal. I don't think he should be arrested, but it's morally offensive to go because I think Vladimir Putin is indeed an enemy of the United States. But given that our politicians have declared such, given that we don't behave as if he's an enemy, given that we haven't really done anything serious about the fact that he's an enemy, I don't think legally he can do anything to Tucker. What you can do is condemn him morally, and I think he should be morally condemned. I don't think that as a... As a public figure, you should give a platform to uh, brutal dictators. I don't think you should give a platform for genocidal maniacs. I don't think you should give a platform for people who don't respect a, an ounce of individual rights on their, in their own country and then launch wars of aggression against others in order to violate their rights. Uh, you know, Putin is the aggressor. Putin is somebody who has launched the largest 
the most substantial war in Europe since World War II, since the Nazis, and Stalin invaded Poland in 1939. People forget that Stalin invaded Poland at the same time as Hitler did. The, you know, the, 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 the Russia and Germany invaded Poland at the same time in a coordinated effort. Yet Russia and Nazi Germany were allies at the beginning of World War II. People forget that. Uh, but uh, so there hasn't been a, a ground invasion as big as uh, since World War II. And uh, I don't think you should give a platform for a lying authoritarian. What, what are you going to learn from it? Who's going to benefit from it? Well, I mean, Tucker Carlson's readings will benefit enormously from it. So I can understand why he's doing it. Tucker Carlson will fawn over Putin, just like he fawned over Orban and just like he fawns over any right-wing authoritarian. Uh, you know, this is, this is, this will just breed more uh, uh, support for right-wing authoritarianism of the kind that Orban and Putin represents among uh, the right in uh, the United States. And... Um, and it's, it's, it's disgusting. It's morally offensive, morally disgusting, our job as human beings. But certainly as objectivists, our responsibility and our job, and Ayn Rand uh, uh, talks a lot about this, is to judge, 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 morally judge, morally judge people. Uh, by the way, I was wrong. There's a sentence you don't often hear. But I was indeed wrong about the statement about Ayn Rand and, and uh, out of the New Testament, I said that it was uh, the, the one about a judge will be ready to be judged was some of the, was, was something that was the New Testament that Ayn Rand liked. And it's, it, God, that is wrong. The New Testament says, don't judge. The New Testament says, don't judge. And Ayn Rand took, lest you be judged, something like that, right? Don't judge, lest you be judged. And Ayn Rand flipped that. So Ayn Rand completely contradicts Christianity and upends Christianity by saying, oh, no, 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 that is the wrong, that is the wrong advice. Judge not, lest you be judged, is exactly the opposite of what is morally necessary. Rand says, no, judge and, and, and be willing to be judged is the right moral approach, and I am you know, for what it's worth, I guess, for, uh, for what it's worth, I am judging Tucker Carlson to be, uh, you know, an, an immoral, you know, uh, uh, right-wing, um, you know, click, click, uh, desiring, uh, horrible human being that he is. And of course, uh, this is not my first encounter with Tucker. So, uh, Tucker Carlson has been in that particular place in Iran, Brook Hell, for a while, for a while. But this is the Republican Party. They're going to cheer this. They're going to get excited by it. The modern Republican Party is a Republican Party that admires Putin and Orban and right-wing authoritarians and wants to emulate them.